Hi, this is Gil Robles here, and I'm doing a page of warm-up sketches on uh, Leonardo, a great app that I like to use when doing this this type of thing, just sketching whatever comes to mind. This is the type of thing I like to do when I don't know what to do. You know, I want to draw, I want to sketch, and I don't exactly know what to draw or don't have anything in mind at the time, but I just, you know want to relax and maybe this is the type of thing I do also before I go into something more something that's more of a project more of a uh, um, more involved and so I kind of like to loosen up and do this type of thing where I'm just sketching I'm just sketching what comes to mind and uh, and so this is what this well this is not going to be what this video is about but this is what I'm going to be doing while I talk and before I go on uh, I do want to take a moment to thank uh, my patrons on Patreon uh, for supporting me and helping me to continue uh, doing this. Uh, um, a number of good things have come up uh, uh, recently. Uh, I started teaching a class in uh, for for adults and teens, um, which is great. And uh, so I'm teaching a portrait class, and they've also asked me if I can teach. Uh, not only this summer but also in the fall so that's great um, actually one of my students requested that I teach it uh, um, in the fall uh, even though that was already they had already planned to ask me it was nice to know that someone had uh, had asked you know but anyway what I wanted uh, again wanted to thank all my patrons on patreon and um, I will leave a link for it um, below if in case anyone's interested in supporting my channel and what it is that I do and in, in trying to grow uh, trying to share and um, you know just try trying to, to, to do these things as best as I can like I said it, it's uh, trying to share because for me um, the process of being an artist is always a process of becoming, always a pro process of becoming better, of learning more about yourself and, and, and um, ways of communicating uh, a, a unique vision. And um, what I wanted to talk about as far as this, uh, this, this video is concerned and while I'm doing these sketches is uh, how we're influenced. Um, I know for me, uh, for a long time, I've been influenced by a lot of different artists, uh, but especially when I draw from my imagination like I'm doing now, uh, there are artists, mostly comic book artists, that come to mind, like John Basima, uh, uh, gosh, uh, names escape me now, but John Basima is the most prominent one because that was, that's kind of the guy I really started out with. I mean, there were a lot of different artists that I looked at. But um, Basima, because of the way he drew uh, certain people, the way he drew people just really appealed to me. And so I picked up a lot from him. Of course, I bought the, the book How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way when I was a teen. This was many, many years ago. And um, so I, I learned a lot. Um, and, I, I, and since then, of course, my... Uh, I've always added names to that. I've added uh, Alexander Toth. I've added um, Joe Kubert. I've added uh, Gene Colan. Uh, different artists. Gil Kane. Bernie Wrightson. All of them were different. But mostly uh, Basima stuck out for me. Neil Adams, of course. Um, and the way he drew appealed to me. Now, one of the things is that when we look at other artists and we're influenced by them, we got to also realize that those guys were influenced by someone else. I mean, we all have some kind of influence. Uh, um, and, and for Basima, it was uh, Hal Foster. It was Alex Raymond. It was Milton Kniff. It was uh, illustrators like um, Al Dorn. And what I started to do was I started to look at... The people who influenced him so I could understand him better. And this was a good thing because one of the things it did is it expanded what it is that I, you know, what it is that I had known 
and I got to add new names that I would have never known had I not begin to began to explore uh, what influenced the artists that I've been influenced by. So um, I I, uh, um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about Al Dorn and how close uh, Musima was how closely Brusina was influenced by him, especially, I, I think, in, in like uh, like the, the mid-60s work or, or the later 60s work, just before the 70s. And you could see, because Albert Dorn had a way with drawing faces and characters, which you can see in Basima's work, as well as uh, drawing hands. And you saw a lot of expressive hands during this time in Basima's work, which I think was mostly the influence of Albert Dorn. Um, a good guy to look up. There was a book that came out on him recently, um, but uh, Albert Dorn is, is is a terrific illustrator who drew in a comic book type style. But um, again, you know, um, I learned a lot, and I learned a lot from 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 finding out about these uh, other artists, and I got to add different names and 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 continue to look at more and more artists who began to influence me and as i continued to grow as an artist that that, that that list of artist names grew as well and um so i was looking at all these different artworks and being influenced by all these different uh people and at different times that they don't always share uh uh they they don't always share that that same um look I guess uh, but you know what I started to pick up was that everyone had a unique vision every vision or, or way of seeing things let me put it that way everyone had a way of putting down and recording what they see and sure they were influenced by other people but there was something about uh, what they did that was distinctly I can tell the difference between an Albert Dorn and a John Buscema drawing. Even though they look similar, there was something different about the way John Buscema would draw it. Uh, and, you know, the same with any other artist. I, I can see the influences that these artists have and also started to look around and look at life and see and, and stop to think that how did these artists see and record what they did uh, because, you know, the, 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 one of the things is we look at life and we're trying to portray life. Even when you're trying to portray something as, 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 uh, as unreal as, as a superhero and stuff like that, you start to look at, um, you, you, you not start to look at, you, you want to kind of record it in a way that's believable so that when you communicate it to people, there's something recognizable that, puts it in their world even though you know they're doing incredible things or whatever it puts it in their world and it makes it more believable so um i started looking around and looking at that and also at some point i started learning about other things and then other things took over the drawing and painting from life and so forth and then other names uh came in and actually became more important to me than, um, than, than, than drawing in a comic book type style because I wanted to draw, I wanted to paint uh, like illustrators like Norman Rockwell or J.C. Leyendecker or Dean Cornwell or um, uh, then, you know, I go on to uh, fine artists like Rembrandt or Velasquez or Sargent or Soroya or, you know, on and on and on. There was all these things that I was picking up. But when I drew from my imagination, it was much easier for me to come down to something like this and to have fun sketching uh, like this and drawing characters from my imagination. And, and I still like to do it, obviously, you know, but what I started to, to think about recently is about um, being influenced um, because we can we can be you know we we can look at other artists and, and admire them and sometimes it can be like overwhelming like you know we want to be just like them but there comes a time where you have to begin to trust yourself 
begin to trust the way you see things uniquely and to begin to record the world even it's if it's the world of your imagination in a way that you uniquely see it you know and, and you know what the one of the things that 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 one of the ways that all this artwork all these influences draw you in is that you might recognize some of yourself in it you know i think that is a part of the appeal that when an artist shares um, these things, it's not only uh, uh, a unique vision, it's also kind of a way of saying, hey, you know, do you see this? Do you see this the way I do? You may not see it the way I do, but you may be able to pick up something that you recognize. And oftentimes that that's kind of the appealing thing, you know, about uh, about this work that, you know what, you even though it's not the way that you would see something you see something in it that you recognize and that you agree with because uh you're drawn to the work you're drawn to uh um to, to something about it that, that you recognize at the same time it may be a way of uh looking at something that you've never uh that you've never saw it in that particular way before so i mean there there are a whole lot of things when it comes to this you know um so like i said when you know when i do these warm-up set sketches i started recalling and I, I usually do by recalling um all these different artists that influenced me and maybe i want to put things down in a particular way i might be thinking of one particular artist and i said well let me let me go ahead and, 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 and draw this like Basima would, would or like Jean Collin would or, or, or so forth. Uh, and then, you know what, I, I, I may not get exactly that, but I get something of that influence in there. Um, and then, you know what, I think I, I didn't get so much of myself, but I got a little bit, I think, of clumsiness when it came to the drawing. And that's the part that I didn't, that I thought didn't look like the artist. It wasn't so much that I was trying to relay my, you know, who I am or, or the way I see things, but because I was trying to record something in a way, in, in someone else's style or someone else's vision, that it, even though it didn't look like theirs, that doesn't mean that, you know, a little bit of my uniqueness came through. I think what it was is that a little bit of clumsiness came through because I'm trying to talk in another language. I'm trying to talk and I don't have the accent, you know, and, and it, it looks a little bit or feels a little bit clumsy because I'm not talking in a natural way or I'm not relaying my thoughts or my feelings in, 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 in pictures in a natural way. I'm talking in somebody else's language. So I think when I started to, and, and um, as I was doing these sketches, as I, you know, and this has been many, many years now, I started to think that, hey, you know what? There is a unique way that I have of seeing things. There is a, a way that I have of putting things down that is just the way I see it. And I haven't really begun to explore that yet. I've been trying to draw like someone else when I draw you know I've been trying to draw not just like someone else but like some other people and um, I haven't begun to explore uh, the way I see things I think I do that when I draw from life I think I do that when I you know if I'm, I'm using a, a photo reference or, or something like that that I'm able to do that without realizing it because I'm trying to communicate what it is that I see. And I think two of the things that are important when you're drawing from imagination, you got to start, you got to begin to put yourself in it. You got to begin, and it's okay to be influenced. It's okay to, to, because there's something about these artists that you recognize as well as, as there's something about it that, them that's unique um, but 
you got to be putting in the things that are unique about you as well and you got to explore that you know to get you know to get away because eventually if you're going to mature you're going to have to get away from the influences you're going to have to look at it and say that okay uh, some of this stuff can help me but some of this stuff actually can help me find me because what about it that I see that's so appealing to me that you know that 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 that, that calls to me and that helps me to to to, to um to want to linger and look at this longer and um and you know imitate it but there's something about it that 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 it called out to you something about it that's unique to you and even though you know it's kind of like a, a shared vision but then there's something about you that hasn't come out yet you know and so i started uh when you know i i did these drawings um and i did this warm-up sketch for fun but this is kind of serious too because i'm no matter what it is that i'm doing i'm always thinking about drawing so I'm always thinking about drawing. I'm always thinking about getting better. I'm always thinking about wanting to improve. I'm always thinking about wanting to do better than I did the last time. And so even a simple warm-up sketch is important because I wanted to, uh, I, I, you know, I wanted to grow from from what I did before. So, you know, I, but I started thinking about, okay, what is it about me that I need to put down? Because it's, it's, it's much easier when I'm drawing from life because I'm seeing things in a unique way I'm seeing things that I see and I'm not thinking about the artists that I'm influenced by I may think about uh, certain artists but I'm also confronted with what's before me whether I'm drawing from the model or I'm drawing from uh, from life being outside and, and, and recording what I see and one of the easiest ways to do this is actually not drawing people but for me it's a uh, uh, landscape painting and you know doing something that's uh, plain air and and um, and sketching what's in front of me you know I, I, I like going out to the park and sketching trees and, 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 and stuff like that and uh, but uh, you know one of the things is that when I'm doing that I'm, I'm, I'm confronted with what's before me and um, the other things that I, I, I've, I've seen, they may enter in some way because I'm influenced by it, but before me is so overwhelming and I'm, I'm trying to record what it is that I see. Um, and versus a drawing from imagination that, you know, you don't have anything before you, you just have your memories of the things that you've seen. And if all you're doing is remembering and recalling um uh, art or drawings then that's what you're allowing to influence you that's what you're allowing to come through but if you also remember uh, lessons that you've learned from drawing from life because drawing from life is important uh, because it's how it's not just how um, other artists influence you it's how what you what you see in your world how that influences you or the, how that shapes you know how, how you communicate that because that's really how you see things that's really you communicating through your drawing how you see the world around you and so there's there's there's, there's a difference um, when I'm drawing from imagination like these three sketches right here I'm recalling other artists I'm recalling all the other influences uh, I'm thinking of different artists, you know, um, when it comes to this. And I'm thinking of, you know, the, the days I spent thumbing through uh, a comic book, thumbing through, I, I used to like a lot of the black and white comic books, you know, especially the Conan and, and stuff like that, or anything that, that, that was uh, done by Gene Colan and Tom Palmer because I liked when they did uh, um, the washes, you know, um, it just... A different look I like the black and white stuff and the Warren magazines and so forth you know so these are the things that I, I think about you know as well as um, uh, of course uh, John Seema but um, 
you know, so that's what you get when I'm drawing from from my imagination. That's what I'm putting down. And then I, you know, in order for me to bring this round about, what I need to start considering, what I thought I need to start considering was um, the way I see things in life, the way that life influences me, the way I try to record what it is that I see and put it down and communicate that to whoever the viewer might be that then that becomes unique that becomes a way you see things that nobody else does that becomes because the, the how you see the world is the way that you see the world and you know other people can can recognize it but there's still something uniquely you about it so that's why you can be in a classroom and everyone's drawing or painting from life and there's something unique, even though they're all drawing from the same model, and aside from their uh, being at a different spot and looking at it from a different point of view, there's a unique way in which they see the model. I mean, there's something there's something about it that you can always say, well, they're painting or drawing from the same model, and so they all look the same in that sense. But if you delve further, there's a unique way that the artist shares what it is that he sees that puts down what it is that that he or she she sees and um that's different and and that goes beyond technique that goes beyond uh um their their, their skill level there's still something unique about the way that they do it and see right here what i'm doing is I'm not working from imagination, I'm working from a photo reference. So now it begins to look different. Now I, I begin to record things be differently because I'm analyzing them differently. I'm not going for uh, a kind of a um, formulaic, uh, a kind of formula, a way of, of, of drawing the 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 what i see i'm trying to look at it and there, there is a, a um there is a basic construction that i see that's similar but there's also trying to record what i see because you know that 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 from life doesn't always follow that basic construction it does to a degree and it's helpful to a degree but at the same time you know that I'm, I'm still looking at, at at measuring the the the, the structure of the skull and, and and where the cheeks fall and and you know and 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 how it lines up and stuff like that so there, there's certain things that are similar but there's certain things that are unique because the individual is unique and then what it what it what this helps me to do is that when i draw from from imagination i can recall these things and put things down a little differently based on the way I analyzed it and the way I put it down so that it begins to look different. It begins to look a more real in, in a sense um, without necessarily shooting for realism. It begins to look more natural. And um, there, there's evidence of uh, me having looked at life and, and brought out something unique. Um, that's not to say that, you know, that, um, how would I put this? That, that's not to say that it's, it's, a, it's perfect in any way, but it begins to uh, um, share it begins to, to, to yeah to share some of the things that, that that is unique about the way I view the world. So again, I mean, there we're going to be influenced. Are the people who we're influenced by have been influenced? You know, we can still borrow and explore and record, you know, um, these influences, but. I think the thing about it is that as an artist, if you're going to grow, you're going to have to share something that's unique about you. And it's going to be more fun that way. 
it's going to be more personal more fun and it's and your work is going to get better because then all of a sudden you you know you you become you become an individual you become someone who's who's uh, different and interesting and I think one of the one of the things about drawing and painting is that you have to you have to be interesting you have to be interesting one to yourself in order to be interesting to other people and so you have to look for these things yeah you, you, yeah you, you gotta begin to communicate when you see something why are you drawing this why why is this interesting to you and you have to communicate to someone else why is this interesting to you through your drawing um, and then that, that's how your drawings become interesting that's how how you become unique because you're having a conversation with someone through your drawing you're trying to put something down in a way that words cannot say why what you see before you is interesting you're using instead of words you're using light and value uh, sometimes color um, you you know you're, you're you're using line um, you all these different elements of drawing to communicate to someone what it is that you see and art is a way of communication art is a way of, of, of sharing what you see and recording what you see whether it's from life or whether it's in your the, your your mind's eye, you know whether it comes from your imagination, whether it comes from life, you're recording a unique way of seeing things, and you're trying to share with someone, and if it's not interesting, someone is not going to hang around the conversation long enough, you know. So it's got to be interesting. It's gotta. It's gotta. You got to share. What is it that makes this particular person, this particular landscape, uh, whatever it is that you're, you're drawing, what is it that makes that interesting? Why is it important that you're telling the world about this? And then, then it becomes unique. Then your drawings start to improve. Then you, you have something to say. And then people will start to listen. So, but um, there's a lot more drawing that I did, and um, I think what I'm going to do is allow this uh, um, video to continue to play. But that that that's that's really the thing that I want to communicate. This is a whole uh, gosh, kind of two-hour session. I, I I've um, sped it up. I, I don't draw this fast. But I, 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 but I sped it up in order to, uh, you know, make it more bite size, make it more of a, easier to digest, rather than um, watching a whole two hours in, in real time. It can be a little bit long, but um, I, I just wanted to be able to communicate what I did as far as um, being influenced by other artists and then being influenced by life. And then sharing um, something that's unique about you uh, when you draw. Now, this is something that I am growing in. This is something that I, I, I started to think about even as I was drawing, uh, even I was doing these uh, warm-up sketches here. It was uh, kind of like in the back of my mind. And then when I, I started to teach a class and um, I started trying to think about how I was going to teach because you know what you have a classroom full of people and each one of them have a unique way of looking at something and again that there, there, there's a shared way that there, there's a way of getting the, these things down there's something that's teachable but what you can't teach is you can't teach someone what it is that they see they have to they have to through maturing in their artwork uh, come to grips with that understand it and then be able to communicate it I can only give them the tools and show them how to look and um, eventually they will begin to see things that only they see and 
and then hopefully I would have provided the tools, the, the, the um, techniques, or whatever you might call them, to be able to put those things down and to be able to communicate with. It's kind of like learning if, if you're, you're a writer, I guess, you know, you, 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 you write from a particular point of view. You have a particular way of communicating things. Now, we can all learn the alphabet. We can all learn how to construct sentences. We can all learn how to write papers and so forth. But how to develop a style or, or, or style, I think, is a wrong, even though that does come out. But sometimes I think people are so concerned with style, they don't realize that they, they try to manufacture a style rather than trying to communicate something that, that is unique, that, uh, that is them, that uh, basically, you know, uh, the style comes because they're sharing something that's different. I think, um, again, just talking about comic book art, when I looked at the art of the past, the different ways of um, how different artists became popular. But one of the things that I saw was that um, some artists became popular not because they were particularly good when they started, but because they were different. Then as they continued, they began to grow. They began to get better. And, um, you know, the, that uniqueness was still a part of of their artwork, but they were better at it. I think of guys like Barry Smith. Barry Smith, I mean, when he started out, nobody drew like Barry Smith. Uh, this was after he did uh, some Avengers and, and superhero comics, and there were uh, like a, a heavy Kirby influenced. But I'm talking about when he started like the Conan, and, and nobody drew like that. That was different. That was a, a unique way of seeing something. And it, it, to me, at the beginning, it didn't seem particularly good. It didn't seem like his figures and, and the way he drew wasn't particularly good. It was kind of raw, but it was unique. And as he, as he continued to draw, I think what, what, what saved it was that uniqueness. And it made him interesting. And as he continued to draw, his skills began to develop. And it got better and better and better until he got to that, that, that um, issue. If you followed Barry Smith, uh, his work on Conan the Barbarian for Marvel Comics in, in the 70s. Um, and he did a, a issue of Savage Tales where they adopted the, the uh, Robert E. Howard story, Red Tales. Now, that was a very unique style, but also his drawing ability had grown. He was incredibly good. So it was, it was something different, um, you know, and it was something unique. And at the time, nobody was drawing like that. Nobody was drawing like that. When Kirby was drawing, it was it was unique. In the 60s, nobody drew like Kirby. You know, Kirby had a unique way of drawing, and, and, and that's what made him, that was, well, somewhat, I might argue there was more, but I'm saying that's part of at least what made him interesting. Uh, when Michael Golden started drawing, I, I never saw anybody draw like that either. It was different when he did the Micronauts and then the other stuff that he did. It was a different way and a different way of communicating, uh, um, you know, a, a, a unique style. So it was different and different and becomes interesting. And um, there could be a lot of things added to that, you know, um, as far as growing as an artist and becoming better and more and more... Um, uh, how would I put it, more, um, more accomplished, you know, um, but, uh, in the beginning, you know, there was just a unique way of recording things that was different than nobody saw it before, and it became interesting. Gil Kane, I, I, I didn't see any artist draw in the way Gil Kane drew. He was different, and, um, but he was also very good at what he did you know, um, as far as drawing figures and stuff like that. So, uh, it was, uh, it, it was interesting at the same time, it, you know, it was different 
and um, also he was a very very accomplished artist. At least I didn't. I I, um, I started collecting comic books in the early seventies. Um, had a few uh, late sixties as well, um, but I, I didn't. I, I really didn't witness or, or was influenced by the earlier earlier um, Gil Kane. Um, more of the, the later ones that he did at Marvel. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's, it was unique and it was different and it was interesting. And then later on, he added the skills. And the, uh, these other artists that I mentioned added the skills. Other artists that you can see um, grew, uh, guys like Bernie Wrightson. Bernie Wrightson uh, was heavily influenced by Frazetta, heavily influenced by Graham Ingalls, who was an artist at EC Comics, uh, heavily influenced by other artists later on. You can see the influence of Franklin Booth and, and uh, other artists who are similar. Um, but, you know, he, there's still something unique about the way he saw things. It, 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 it was different. It was a rights and drawing. So these influences helped him, and there was, but there was also always something unique about the way he saw things. Maybe you know, as he grew um, in the beginning, there was a clumsiness or or whatever. And and I'm sorry if that offends people. I think that Bernie Wrightson is a great artist, but being realistic, we all grow as artists, and where we start off with isn't where we end up with. I mean. Um, he ended up a very, very accomplished artist, a very, very, I mean, amazing stuff. But we all, you know, I, I had a, a teacher in, in high school who said this. We, we would all love to start off where, where Michelangelo left off or where Rembrandt left off. But we also have to be, but we can't. We, we have to begin where they started. You know, and one of the encouraging things about it is that when when Michelangelo started in this world, the same way everybody else does, is a helpless little baby. You know, we can all learn, we can all achieve something, uh, um, and we'll all grow, but we all start off the same way. And that's the same with any other artist. Um, you know, sometimes it's difficult to tell people that their heroes started off as a habit helpless baby you know they, they want to think that they, they came out like Hercules able to strangle serpents in his bed as a baby you know we don't we're not able to do that we, we start out as helpless babies and then we grow and we get better at life we get better at at, at um, as, as an artist we get better at drawing and painting and so forth um, but we start off the same way and then so all these artists that influence us start off the same way and they pick up influences and they grow and they they begin to recognize the way that they see things is unique and then they they begin to show that so anyway um i've talked for longer than i thought i was able to but again if you've hung out with me for this long uh thank you thank you for putting up with uh what it is i had to, to uh, that that i uh took all this time to say um and uh, um you're amazing you're amazing if if, if uh, um you you've hung out this long i don't know if anyone can see this all the way to the end hey if you if you saw this all the way to the end please indicate it let me know that um this uh video has interest you so that way i would know that hey maybe i need to make these videos shorter and not go on um talking and talking and talking and realize that hey the you know Maybe my viewers just want to see uh, a quick drawing or whatever. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm just trying to put down what I put down as best as I can and share things, you know, uh, um, as best as I know how. But um, anyway, I'm going to let this uh, video end. Maybe I'll speed it up a little bit from here and um, save you... Uh, the, the save you the, the the extra time 
but thank you thank you for watching this video especially if you hung out longer um and uh then you get to hear that uh that 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 call to join me on patreon and support this channel and um there will be many many more videos to come uh and and thank you all right bye bye